original screenplay, chosen and directed by one of the country's foremost motion picture directors. Tonight, Screen Directors Playhouse welcomes Mr. Alan Dwan, director of Sands of Iwo Jima, starring John Wayne. For this evening, Mr. Dwan brings us a warmly human story about a minister and a tramp entitled, It's Always Sunday. Our stars are Dennis O'Keefe, Sheldon Leonard, and Faye Ray. Screen Directors Playhouse is brought to you on film by the men and women of Eastman Kodak. And Kodak dealers everywhere. working on that inside pitch. It's a beauty. That's the one I threw to you, right close to your chest. And you clobbered it. That's because I'm nearsighted. You know that. Go on, beat it. Remember, Reverend Parker, you promised to umpire the game today at 5 o'clock. <laughs> okay, Mitch, I'll be there. You remember what I told you about that hook slide. All right. See you boys at 5. <laughs> Did you have an accident? Hmm? Oh. No, no, no. I, um, I was just teaching the kids how to hook slide. Tough game. Looks like the Ma's won. I'll have you know that this is the latest thing from Esquire. Oh. Mrs. Weatherby gave me a flat of cinerarias. You wouldn't mind planting them, would you? I mean, now that you're in your sports clothes. Well, I had kind of planned on that. Please, for me. For you, it's a pleasure. Better do it right away before they dry out. All right. Uh, then don't forget to work on next Sunday's sermon. Oh, and speaking of sermons, and I quote, let not thy right hand know what thy left hand doeth. That's from your last Sunday's sermon, dear. How do you do it? How do you manage to remember only the parts of my sermons that you can use against me? If you eat that drumstick now, You'll spoil your lunch. This is the place. Get a load of the name on the mailbox. Reeve Chase E. Reverend Charles E. Parker. Oh, the Reverend Charles E. Parker. That's yeah. the hobo's friend. Yeah. <laughs> hey. Looks like some hobo beat us to it. Yeah. Hey, Philadelphia Jack said this was a soft touch for us hobos. Hmm. That boy is working. What's the idea? I am going to do a little personal research into the case of the Reverend Charles E. Parker. That's great. I'll research with you. Hey, you wouldn't mind research with me. Why? They've already got one moocher on their hands. Well, well, they may stand for two, but they certainly ain't going to hold still for three. Tell you what I'll do, I'll toss it for. Got a coin? What are you dreaming? Yeah, but I got a bottle top I always use for occasions like this. Just as good. Give me. All right, the cork side is tails, and the side with the commercial on it, that's heads. All right, you call it. Tails. Heads, you lose. <laughs> yeah. Hey, George. What? If it's a sandwich, remember I'll make lots of mustard. Lots of mustard. You got it. Lots of mustard. Hiya, Bo. Hello, friend. What's with the friend bit? Can't you call me Bo like one hobo to another? Like one hobo to another? Oh, I see. You're one of these elegant guys. Would like to be called a knight of the open road, huh? Oh, no, no, it isn't that, you see. As a matter of fact, I need some help with this digging. Oh, I could use some. 
Okay. I'll, I'll dig the holes and you you put the daisies in it, huh? Ordinarily, you understand, I wouldn't be caught doing this, this menial labor, but I think it'll look better in case the sucker happens to be watching. The sucker? Yeah, yeah. The Holy Joe. Is he home? Yeah. Yeah, he's here. I, I just got into town, but I hear that he is a real easy mark. Now, where did you hear that? A friend of mine, Philadelphia Jack, he's another hobo. He left a message on a signboard down by the railroad tracks. Says this is the softest touch since the WPA. <laughs> well, it was very nice of him. By the way, what, what, what's he like? Oh, uh, he's quite a bit like me. Oh, you mean he don't like to work neither? Huh? <laughs> That's not just exactly what I meant. What I meant was that he looks quite a bit like me. Any preacher who looks quite a bit like you could set religion back a hundred years. I've been told that before. Well, don't go around making remarks like that, claiming no resemblance. What, do you want the kids to grow up like heathens? No, I don't want them to grow up that way, but they seem to do it anyhow. I resent that. Oh, nothing personal, you understand. Are you hungry? Well, certainly. <laughs> Be my guest. Hey, I sure admire the way you help yourself. <laughs> With the Lord's help. Yeah, yeah, sure. Not that I got anything against sandwiches, you understand, but you'd think the way you work around here, they would fix you up with some hot cooking once in a while. <laughs> Oh, they do. Now and again. Well, these preachers are so generous that it is a pleasure to take advantage of them. Gee, Dad, sandwiches. Wait, wait just a minute. Wait just a minute, Danny. Those aren't for you. Now, go on. You know what your mother tells you. You spoil your lunch. Oh, gee. Dad, I... Oh, I didn't know you had company. I... Oh, that's all right, Nancy. This is uh, my daughter, Mr. Uh, I don't think I got your name. It's George. Uh, George. How do you do? I I'll talk to you later, Dad. Hey, look, did, did my ears deceive me, or did that kid call you Dad, and did you call this down your daughter? Uh, that's right. Gee. I am the Reverend Parker. Don't give me that. I know a hobo when I see one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, George, but despite the appearance, I really am the Reverend. You want a level? I'm on the level. Oh, in that case, look, um, look, Your Honor, I, I, uh, anything I said was said from the depths of my ignorance. Well, you know, I was. It's all right, George. It's all right. Relax. I'm still a real easy mark. <laughs> see, Reverend, if you was a hobo. You would be the king. Mother. Yes? You simply have to put a stop to it. Put a stop to what? Father. Why should I put a stop to your father? I rather like him. Well, you know what I mean. He's done it again. Done what? Dragged another stray into the kitchen. Oh? Why do they all come to our house? They don't go to other people's houses. I suppose they take one look at your father and recognize a kindred soul. That's just what I mean. Daddy's clothes look worse than the tramps. Man in his profession should have some, some dignity. Nancy, always remember this. Your father has more inner dignity than anyone I've ever known. Oh, I know, Mother. But why doesn't he wear some of it where it shows? Oh, yes. That's Bill. Look, I, I don't get this sky pilot bit. Look, I don't do nothing, and yet I, I'm wearing better clothes than you are. You're uh, also eating my food. Well, that's what I mean. You see, you work hard, and you still got holes in your shoes. What's the point? Well, uh, some people sell automobiles. Some people sell real estate. Some sell insurance. Oh, this I dig. You mean you got a racket going for you on the side? 
Well, that's not just exactly what I meant, George. You see, I just do my best to sell man's trust in his fellow man. Well, there ought to be a big market for this, and I kind of hardly nobody's got any. <laughs> what makes you say that, George? Well, I'll tell you a little story. See, I used to have a friend who owned a bar, and he had a bartender working for him. And every time my friend's back was tied, this bartender used to play Yankee Doodle on a damper. Well, my friend can't take the rap uh, out of George, what? would you mind putting that into plain English? Oh, <laughs> Yankee Doodle on a damper. That yeah. means that he used to keep his hands in a till, help himself, see? Oh, well, finally my friend went broke. Oh, it's tomorrow. Tomorrow it is? Don't trust nobody. See, I ought to know. I was the bartender. Things finally got so bad, I had to quit working. See, I couldn't even trust myself. Trust thyself. Mm -hmm. Trust thyself, and others will trust you. How's that? Well, that's very good, George. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Thanks for what? Well, that's the uh, thought that I was lacking in my sermon for tomorrow. Uh, if you wait right here, I'll be back. Oh. How do you like that? I tap the bar, keep still, and a preacher needs that for his sermon. Gee. If you place your trust in this person, do you not appreciate that trust and in turn trust his fellow man? Of course, dear. Charles! That's it, George. You've given me the theme for my sermon. Trust thyself. It will follow that you will find trust from your fellow man. Charles, can you be excused for a minute? Oh, sure, she'll be right with you. Uh, you just make yourself it up. Yeah. yeah sure. Trust thy trust thy fellow man. What a pigeon he'd make in a poker game. I'm going to a club luncheon. Nancy will see that you and Danny are fed. Mm -hmm. And I've left a list of your appointments on your memo pad. Oh, fine. All right. Well, have a good time, dear. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Bye. Did they run it us? Yes. Okay. Appointments. <sighs> One o'clock, take a shower. Get dressed like a human being. This is our anniversary. 1.30, work on your sermon. This is our anniversary. 2.30, 3.30 to 4.30, work on your sermon. This is our anniversary. 5 o'clock, umpire a baseball game. P.S., in case you've forgotten, this is our anniversary. Anniversary. Mary! Father! Oh, yes. You remember Bill Brackton? Oh, yes, of course. Hello, Bill. How's college? Fine, sir. Gee, our collection's that bad? Bad. Oh, well, uh, Dad's been doing a little gardening. Oh, yes, yes. Oh, oh, Bill, I, I just remembered. Uh, Mrs. Parker took our car, and I have an errand. Uh, could I borrow yours? Oh, sure. Father! Oh, what's the matter? Oh, well, nothing. Uh, you ever drive a Thunderbird before? No, I don't think I have. <laughs> then take it easy, because it's red hot. Oh, don't worry about it, Bill. I'll be very careful. Well, Dad, we're going next door to play badminton, in case anything happens. Oh, what could happen? Well, in this house, anything. Roses it is. Oh, how do you do? Oh, won't you step in? Something I can do for you? You were looking for a freight share. Yes. It said on a mailbox outside that one lives here, a Reverend Parker. <laughs> That's right. Is he high priced? Oh, I, uh, I shouldn't think so. In fact, as uh, some say, he's a very soft touch. <laughs> With that Thunderbird? <laughs> Looks fast, doesn't it? And expensive. Uh, could you call the preacher or something? You see, we want to... We want to get married. Oh. Splendid. Fine. Now, won't you come in, please? Just, uh, just make yourself at home. And, uh, Reverend Parker will join you in just a few moments. Thanks a lot, Bo.
George. Hey, uh, look, Reverend, I'm not going to explain yeah. everything. I, I, I wasn't going to explain what? what? All about the grub, the chow, you see? Chow? Was... Oh, forget it, George, forget it. I asked you to be my guest, didn't I? Whew, what a host. George, hey, can what? you drive a car? Well, I can drive it, but I don't think it'll run. Well, it's brand new. Brand... You mean it's new Thunderbird? Yes, that's right. Would you do me a favor, George? Well, it depends. I want to get my wife some flowers, but, well, I have to perform a marriage ceremony. There's a little florist shop on the other side of Wait, town. Wait, hold it, hold it. You mean, you mean you would trust me with ten bucks and a new car? Of course. <sighs> Learn to trust thyself, and it follows that you will find trust in your fellow man. Eh? You remembered it. Give me the ten bucks. Hey, look, Reverend, I recommend you find a new line of business because a guy like you, you're liable to run into some dishonest people. So... See what I mean? Yes, yes, I see what you mean. Now, you uh, be sure and tell the lady in the forest shop that I want long stem roses. You're still going to trust me with the money in the car, huh? Why not, George? <laughs> look, Reverend, I think you ought to look for a new line of business. Because No, on second thought, I think you ought to go out of business altogether because a guy like you, you are bound to get clipped. <laughs> Here's the keys, George. Place the ring on her finger and repeat after me. Receive this ring. Receive this ring. As a token of wedded love and truth. As a token of wedded love and truth. Join your right hands. I now pronounce you man and wife. In the name of God, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Congratulations. Best wishes. Thank you. Whew. Gee, I'm sure glad that's over with. Aren't you going to kiss her? Do you think I should, Reverend? Well, if you don't, I'll call the whole thing off. Yes, sir. You call that a kiss? Do you think you could do any better? Stand aside, rookie. Bill! Oh, Bill, I, uh, I wonder if you and Nancy would mind witnessing the certificate. It's right over there on the desk. Yes, sir. Well, I guess I owe you some money, don't I? Why are you working, Stanley? Well, uh, I'm just sort of in between jobs right now. Well, I'll tell you what, Stan, let's, um, let's just put it on the cuff, shall we? You trust me? Why is everybody so astonished when you trust them? Gee, Reverend, thanks. Thanks a lot. Not at all. <laughs> Thank you. There you are, my dear. Thanks again for everything. You take good care of it now, Stanley. I know you two are going to be very, very happy. Wasn't it romantic? Wasn't it dreamy? Yeah, if you go for that stuff. Oh, come on, we'll finish the game. Hey, Reverend, the Thunderbird's gone. On a mission of love and devotion. Quarter to five? Now, I just can't understand it. One minute I have a car, the next minute I'm a pedestrian. Bill, will you stop worrying and light a minute? Boy, is my dad going to be sore when he gets here. You didn't have to call your dad, did you? Trust your fellow man. <laughs> you just can't go by all that stuff, Nancy. Your dad's wacky on the subject. It's strictly for Sunday. With my father, it's always Sunday. He's the wisest and the best and... I guess that must be my old man now. Hello, Mr. Brackett. Hello, Nancy. Look, young man, the next time I... All right. Where's my car? Now, Brack, now, Brack, just take it easy. Your car will be back, I give you my word. Easy not to worry when it's somebody else's property. But suppose it was something of yours. Something you valued, like, uh, like your best fishing rod. Yeah, the one with the spinning reel. I guess you'd loan that to somebody. Oh, I not only would, I did. Oh, you did? 
And I guess you're not worried about it. Not a bit. What makes you think you're going to get it back? You let some chiseling muttonhead borrow it, now you're never going to get it back. Oh, I wouldn't say that. I think you'll give it back just as soon as you're through with it. Of course I... All right. All right, I'll bring it back tomorrow. But what does that prove? Well, it proves you can trust your fellow man. Trust? Bah! That's a peculiar statement for you to make, Brack, being the head of a trust company. Hey, wait a minute. You say you're sure that hobo will bring my car back? I'm certain he will. Okay. I'm gonna bet you double or nothing. If he comes back, I'll donate $500 instead of my usual 250 to the church welfare fund. But if he doesn't, not one red cent. You know I don't gamble. Except with other people's cars. All right. If he's not back in half an hour, I'll call the police. Oh, you won't have to worry. I've already called. Oh, for a second, easy. Edward, tell this guy to take his cotton picking hands off me, will you? You're ruining the wardrobe. Where's my car? It's outside, Mr. Brackett. I picked him up at the city limits. I want a free lawyer. George, who is this? Oh, did this is my pal, Eddie. Eddie, shake hands with the rubber. It's a pleasure, Reverend. Eddie? Lock him up, officer. I'll sign the charges. Now, wait just a minute, officer. George, tell me the truth. Did you have any intention of stealing the car I loaned you? Well, uh... Well, that, that's uh, hard to say, Reverend. You see, it's kind of a familiar feeling, me sitting behind a wheel of a heap that wasn't mine. <laughs> so I picked up Eddie here, and we was driving along. He was eating a sandwich and reading your sermon. My sermon? Yeah. Trusting your fellow man. The sandwich was wrapped in it. Oh, oh, yes. Yeah, the first thing you know, he's got tears in his eyes. Oh, it was beautiful. Just beautiful. Well, anything can make any cry, I gotta see. So I stopped the car, and I listened. For five hours? It was a long Simon. And he's a slow listener. Oh, oh go on, George, go on. Well, that's all. Next thing, bingo. We're headed back for town. You can, you can ask him. They were headed back into town. Wonderful. Wonderful. Hey, you see, Brack? He was to be trusted. They took the car, didn't they? Well, now, that is debatable. How could we be taking it when we was bringing it back? You want to prefer charges, Reverend? No, certainly not. It just proved a point for me. They can go, can't they? Well, the law says anybody without funds must be taken in as a vagrant. Hey, wait a minute. Come Come on. this vagrant... Let's go. We... Uh, George! Just a minute, please. George, the ten dollars that I paid you. Oh, yeah. Well, I, I meant to tell you about that, Reverend. You see, I didn't get a chance to go to the flower shop to get those roses, so... Oh, you know. no, no, that's all right, George. Well, I'm just right. trying to... It's all right, George. Don't argue with the Reverend. Hey, our officer. Does that look like they're without funds? Yeah, yeah. Does, uh, does this look like I'm without funds, officer? Heffa, that's mine. Well, all right. Fine, fine. George, Eddie, come back any time. Well, thanks a lot, Reverend. And after reading your sermon, I'd put trust in my own brother. And nobody can trust him. Maybe we can do you a good turn someday, Reverend. George, you've already done me one. <laughs> oh, well, by the way, I almost forgot. Here's your sermon. With mustard. Oh, well, thanks, Eddie. <clears throat> An officer, I'm going to commend you to the chief. Thank you, Reverend. Brack, you want to give me that check for the welfare fund, or will you mail it to me? I'll mail it. Don't forget, Brack. Five hundred. Double or nothing. You did remember, didn't you? Remember? Our anniversary. Oh, the roses. yes, the roses. Well, I got a little help from the memo pad. <laughs> but you didn't get them. I'll run downtown and get you. Oh, them. no, never mind. I don't care as long as you remember it. You know, darling, you've got something that no other woman on this earth has got. What? Me. Oh, you. <laughs> you. <laughs> <laughs> Stop smooching and come on, Dad. You're holding up the game. Oh, the game. Oh, that's right. Well, I'm afraid, Danny, that you'll have to get somebody else done for you. Oh, gee, Dad, you're the only one we can trust. I'll let you go. Run along with the other little boys. <laughs> All right. Come on, son. Keep your eye on the ball, Reverend. Next week, Screen Directors Playhouse is paid a return visit by Mr. George Wagner, famous for his direction of Hollywood adventure films such as The Gunfighters, 
and The Fighting Kentuckian, which starred John Wayne. Mr. Wagner will direct Errol Flynn in his first dramatic role on television in an exciting adventure story entitled Sword of Villon. Be sure to join us.